I'm going to do this. Somebody come to the door, and I wish I hadn't answered it. Now I thought it was maintenance. I uh, lost that video I was putting up. I was talking about the mind control murders done in patterns and what's been done to me, running me back and forth, uh, keeping me a pauper and homeless. But this is um, uh, one of the state troopers I was telling about, State Trooper Carl Barton and his wife bringing me down off the mountain where it was a, a, a spot to camp and pay to camp uh, owned by the national, is national park, not a state or, or federal. Well, it's federal. Anyway, uh, during the night, someone poured gasoline on my tent and I had to sleep out. Uh, or sit at the picnic table, and they were hosts, Carl Barton and his wife. I think her name was Linda. I, I still have it. But anyway, they gave me their their address and everything and told me they brought me down to Affordable Corporate Suites on Starkey Road. I want you to get the fact that it's Starkey Road, and that's the drummer from the Beatles that was just knighted by this woman who's a fraud. She's a war criminal. So the Starkey Road is the last name of uh, the Beatles. By the way, he married, if you get into all of this, you wonder who put it together. He married uh, the girl off of the Duke of Hazards, as in I work for the district attorney, Fred Simpson. Um, and I began later finding out during the campaign at, uh, to replace a doctor I'd written about, Larry MacDonald. That's Hustler Magazine. Larry Flint was shot in Lawrenceville uh, by a program shooter while I was doing the book in Marietta uh, about mind control. Uh, and he was actually shot and flew me out there during that campaign. Anyway, if it sounds garbled, um, let me just get back to this. Starkey, of course, is the, um, well, the district attorney I worked for was Fred Simpson. That was after they almost killed me, April Fool Day of 80, and here it's April Fool Day and Easter, this many years later, and I'm living in hell. This is um, uh, one of the state troopers. This happened, by the way, after Carl Barton brought me down to affordable corporate, and they paid the security deposit, and I paid for about 17 months. Till, it's owned by Jews, and they are wealthy here. This is, I can't remember their name. Uh, but they um, finally raised the rent, and I went through hell. They did all this, The uh, I'm allergic to chemicals, and it was a living hell, but I put up with it, and they raised the rent where I couldn't even afford the rent after about 17 months, and I left. But this is uh, right after Carl Barton and his wife, the retired state trooper, dropped me off there and paid the security deposit. This is what happened later. And I've been talking about mind control murders done in patterns. And it is so sad. This is um, one of them that uh, I don't think anything's ever been done, but it's the programming. Uh, the, the kids at Parkland have made a big issue about the wrong thing. It's not your guns. It's being programmed. This young man was programmed down there. He doesn't even know it. He's a victim. Whether you like to believe it or not, he's a victim. One of your kids can come out blowing uh, people apart. And by the way, uh, one of the uh, deputies down there at Parkland was named um, Scott Peterson. There is a connection there. There was more than one Scott. The sheriff's name, Scott, da-da-da, um, as in Scott Peterson out in, uh, who's on death row, by the way, for killing Lacey and his unborn son, Connor, and Mark Garagos was the attorney. So uh, this is mind control. Now, I'm going to uh, get this one. I lived in the National Forest for a long time. Just in froze. Uh, I'm I'm not kidding you. In a hiker's where, shelter where there, um, there's snakes, there's spiders. It was cold as heck. You freeze, uh, even if you had the best of equipment, you freeze. So I've I've done it all to stay alive, and told this all along about the mind control murders. Uh, 
This is Hattie Childs. It's, it's not the total children's name. It's Childs. And this is David Metzler. His uh, father was a doctor, or is a doctor. He's dead. Both of these were shot by a rifle in the Jefferson National Forest. Now, they were students at Virginia Tech next door here in um, Christiansburg and Blacksburg. They were simply out there in the park. And um, that's where the Virginia Tech shootings happened. The young man from South Korea shot 32, turned the gun on himself and shot himself. He was programmed to commit suicide or make it look like it is murder by mind control. And he shot all those people. That's the same thing that was used mind control down in Parkland in, um, oh, let's see, in, um, well, all of them. I've got a bunch of uh, Gabby Gifford, the congresswoman that got shot in uh, Tucson, Arizona. It's married to Mark Kelly, twin to Scott Kelly, the astronaut. So you get into, uh, you get it. Uh, so now then, I'm going to go to this part. Back when this started, when I'd done the book, and I, I so much was happening, had a letter from the FBI, and uh, ongoing investigation, national security involved, um, and it's sure been ongoing, and I'm not sure they're all the bad guy in this. It's the people that allowed it to happen. Uh, this, I had started uh, mid-March of 80, before April Fool Day, when they almost killed me, and then Easter on the 6th was on a Sunday uh, in 80, and I was taken across the state line in uh, the condition I was in. Uh, they almost killed me. I, it was... You know, anyway, a miracle I didn't die. Oh, uh, but here is where they were shot. In uh, across memorializes Heidi Childs and David Metzers, where they were shot at Caldwell Field at Craig Creek Road. Now, um, the uh, Laura Childs, I believe, is the mother, and that's where. There are other names. I just I'm not gonna put them all down there, and it's where it happened. The Caldwell Fields. What I'm gonna put here though is uh, when I was going to. Um, that's not showing anything. In in 1980, prior to almost being killed, April Fool Day, it had gotten so bad. My ex-husband, or I thought he was my ex-husband, uh, there was divorce and. Uh, which none of that's anyway let me just stick to that I had a letter from the FBI June the 23rd 79 this is uh, mid-March and things are so bad it's about the 8th of March the 1st that I was going to try to get my sons out of the Atlanta area uh, I'd done the book and I thought it was because of the book that so much was happening and um I, well, my ex-husband had come back, or I thought he was my ex-husband anyway, had come back because so much was happening to me and the children. And I remember I signed the lease. There was no question about the lease it was in my name, the deposit. I took John over there to talk to the manager, and uh, she knew the things that were happening. It's, it's like I've been running around begging pleading and things were being done to my children there were spiders huge spiders all over the house the apartment and I walked in one day and one was right behind Mark's head and Scott when you would walk down the steps to where he was sleeping the little bedroom he was sleeping in you'd almost step on them on the floor and I finally I couldn't get anybody to tell me what they were or do anything about it and finally somebody from Sears come over and looked and said they were spiders that that were from South America. They weren't even supposed to be in that area. So I'm just going to leave it there. John talked to the, and I took him to the manager, and here's what she said. And I had the letter from the FBI, June the 23rd, 79, ongoing investigation, national security involved. So now then, I'm there to, um, I'm there to, uh, 
take John and make sure the woman knows, the manager knows that he's my ex-husband. He's uh, just going to be there a few days out of the month because so much has been done to me. I had a letter from the FBI and all that, and sugar put in my son's uh, car and all the lifters and everything. Harassment beyond belief. Now then, there was no doubt. I, I, I had signed the lease prior my uh, deposit and even bringing him there to make it okay and she totally understood she made the comment at that, that time that her uh, uncle was in charge of the Patty Hearst kidnapping well I didn't know about my name then and kidnapping it was 83 when I found out anyway that uh, the Hearst got a hold of my book and come to find out Hearst is part of the global government, the Illuminati that kidnapped me. I later find out about my kidnapping, and uh, they just wanted me dead. So Patty Hearst was kidnapped, and Sinatra and Bennett, and some of these people are mafia. They're global government, your Illuminati. They helped in my kidnapping, plot and planning it. Or, and carrying it out. But anyway, I wanted to get back to, I left and uh, called Laura, John had called Laura and his sister, and that's the uh, Laura's used in this uh, murder, the patterns of the, uh, he's a retired state trooper, in case I didn't make that clear. His name is, um, her name's Heidi Childs, Don Childs, and I, it's so sad that, you know, uh, anyway, I'll leave it there. And that happened right after Carl Barton had taken me to Starkey Road, which is the uh, last name of, which I'm talking about patterns, how new murders were done in patterns. Starkey is where Affordable Corporate Suite is, and Carl Barton was the Virginia State Trooper and his wife that took me there. Carl was a twin to Peggy, where they took me when they kidnapped me, and they gave me her name. So, uh, if I can follow it all, you all can, because it affects, well, anyway. that was They took me, it was on Starkey Road, affordable corporate suites. And it was right, they paid the security deposit, and I paid the 17 months I was able to live there in hell. And, uh, I mean, holy hell. And until uh, they raised the rent, a Jew on that. He's gotten very wealthy in this town. Uh, so now then... Um, Heidi and uh, her uh, friend are shot in the National Forest. Remember I said I lived in the National Forest, froze and starved for years because I had no place to live. They've kept me a pauper and homeless. Now, this happened, the murders of uh, the state trooper Don. Um, I've had a bad night. I've had stuff pouring out in here and uh, my air conditioning come on banging like the one next door. I've never heard one even bang like that. I'm so sick. Now somebody just messed up my, I had to answer the door. I thought it was maintenance. It turned out it's a girl that, that looked like she was out of it or something with a backpack on. And uh, I messed up my video there, I guess. But anyway, if I'm babbling, uh, you can understand it. Uh, really, I'm going through this, and Laura was one of the names used. Um, that's the state trooper, Don, his wife, and the mother of Heidi. So you understand that. Laura Childers, it's got the ERS other than Laura Childs. It's Laura May Childers. It's, uh, she married a client. She's living outside of um, Austin, Texas. When I went out there in 80, uh, 80 and was going to try to, she was going to help me get a job, and uh, I was going to stay a couple of weeks, and if I got a job, I was going to move out there with the boys, my sons Mark and Scott, get them away from that. I didn't know about being kidnapped. I thought it was because of the book. And um, when I got to, uh, and I've been kept penniless even back then, doing the book and trying to work and all that, uh, I got to... Uh, it's, I can't think of the name of it. It's the name of a barbecue. It's the town, it's a suburb of Dallas. I got there that night and stayed the day's in. Called Laura and said that the next morning I said, I'm here, I'm ready to come on in. She lived in Abilene then. She's moved outside Austin. And they were CPAs, so that it, she's still alive, I think. 
Anyway, she got me out there. She helped my ex-husband lure me out there. And then she tells me after I'm out there that I'm no longer welcome. I can turn around and go back. When I go back, the apartment manager has allowed my ex-husband to uh, to have a new lease, move my furniture into another apartment there at Laurelwood. And um, it's in the same complex, same management, same bunch of uh, apartments only this was allowed to do the leases in my name and deposit she's allowed him to sign a new lease move my stuff and i still had uh till may on my lease and she let him well it was done while i was gone the first of uh the 8th of march of 80 i come back just a few days later my apartment's gone it's moved to another apartment within the complex, a new lease in his name. I don't have a key, and I was almost killed April Fool Day following that. So you get the drift. But you get enough that murders were done in patterns. And, uh, you know, I started when I did this, I suppose in all of it, you know, I felt sad. Uh, for the kids that some of them are on death row um, that have been programmed to shoot, and they're victims just like the young man, Cruz, in Parkland, Florida, or uh, the Aurora, Colorado, where they try to say he's mentally ill, and they, where are all your psychiatrists and doctors on this? Ask yourself why they're trying to point to mental illness and use it and take away your guns. That's all I'm going to say because I am living in hell myself and telling this. And you know what? People don't want to hear it. And one of the FBI men in Atlanta agents said to me, and they were, as far as I know, they were good agents. They told me when I was almost killed April Fool Day, and I'm trying to call, and you have to know what happened to me, what they did to me. Then later on, Cobb County police detectives, who were too associated with law enforcement, were killed the same way they tried to kill me. So I was trying to tell the FBI, who already had sent me a letter June the 23rd of 79, ongoing investigation, national security involved. They told me they were doing all they could from there. And one of the agents told me, and he yawned, and he said, what you're telling them bores them. It's not until they learn how to fix them that they care. And then one of the agents was in Grottos, Virginia, not too far up here before I, moved, before I came to Roanoke. I still had the Larry Flint car furnished to me. And um, he... Um, Oh, it was just parked there. I didn't have the money for gas, and yet I'm pumping gas and uh, cooking for the family uh, one meal a day, which was okay. They were pretty nice to me while I was there, really. And I worked in their little convenience, Exxon convenience store. So the Hustler car was parked there, a brand new car leased. And nobody, you know, everybody knows I'm telling the truth. What's wrong with that picture, you know? But the FBI guy retired, and I remembered later seeing him in, at Brown Engineering with my husband, and him introduced to me. They didn't say it was FBI. Here he is uh, back, this is about 1962 when that happened. He's retired. He's up in Grottos, Virginia. He's retired, and he comes in to get gas. He come into the store one day, and he said to me, um... And I don't feel good right now if I can remember his words. I've put them up here enough. He said to me, they, he's talking about the FBI, have made it so ludicrous. Everybody knows you're telling the truth. It gives them a chance to help or walk away. 